Well, it turns out winter is back. Ugh. Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick, and we are in the indoors again with my buddy Carter, and we are installing more things on the boat. I think today we're going to tackle possibly a couple wires, networking cable, uh, maybe mount the networking box, that kind of stuff, maybe a battery tray in there. And uh, yeah, and then also we're gonna talk a little bit about spring fishing here too, and go through a couple of things we'll be using like right when spring hits, because I do want to give some of those jigs away in this video, but we'll we'll tell you how to, you can win those jigs a little bit later in this video. I believe it's like a $100 package. I'm pretty sure he's got 50 jigs to give away and it's about $2 a jig. So it's $100 worth of jig jigs that I'll ship out at my expense to whoever wins it. But we're going to start with a networking cable. That's the only cable I actually have to run from the front of the boat to the back of the boat since I'm going to be powering my front fish finders off of a third battery that's up front. So let's, let's tackle that first. Okay, so what is a networking cable and what does it do? This is a networking cable right here. It's a 20 footer. Since I'm only going from halfway from the boat to the front, I'll be able to get away with a 20 footer quite easily. What the networking cable does is it hooks from your unit into this ethernet box. If you have more than two units in your boat, you need a, a, a networking box like this for all of your units to kind of talk together. So what's gonna happen is that uh, the back unit is going to be able to talk with my front unit. So if I'm reading 20 feet here and I wanna know what it is when I'm up at the front, I can turn it on and it will network all together. So I can network the, all the graphs as well. The only thing you can't network is your mapping. You have to have like a separate mapping card and then obviously your auto chart won't go through either. Your auto chart cards will only work on the one unit that the card is in, but the networking allows all of your units to communicate basically. So first things first, run this cord from the front to the back. This is the one I figured might give us the most hassle, but after looking at it over a few times, I think we'll be okay. And then we'll find a place to mount this networking box in the back as well. Okay, so networking cable right now goes through from there. It's gonna go underneath there. We do have it down in that compartment. It'll get tidied up nicely, comes through there and around. And then underneath here, it actually goes behind this. We have to take one thing off here, which is very, very minor pull it out and try to get going again. And that's gonna get back to our small hole that we had in our last video there. So we're, we're getting close. These, this is gonna be the hardest wire for us to probably put on. And after this, it should be smooth sailing. So you're always gonna run into hurdles, obstacles. They're never barriers, but they're definitely hurdles and obstacles as you go. So it came all the way through there, up at the top. We're gonna to clean all that up there where that black wire is, you can see at some point. And then it came through here underneath to here which we had off and we got it through there and we thought okay well now we'll just continue on and go from here to here well you think we could get from there back to that hole no we did everything we ended up with a big long snake that's right there and we have to cut the end of it off because once we got it so far we couldn't get it back so the only thing we could do which is fine we end up coming through this little box here we come here we made a hole up here which this will all be get all cleaned up all the way here. And then actually I'll end up taking these back out and I'll put some nice little grommets like this on there and clean it up all nice. But that's what we ended up with. I know it all looks sloppy now, but we'll clean everything up. And then we hung the networking box. I'm going to be running a Dakota 100 amp hour battery in here. So that's gonna go here, networking box. And uh, I'm not sure what else is gonna end up in here, but it'll be a bunch of other electronic stuff at some point. When it comes to the boat stuff like this, installing everything, there's always like, like I said, gonna be hurdles, obstacles and all that where you think everything's going smooth all of a sudden it's like, oh, a cable won't come. Like even now I'm running into a situation where it's like, okay, where's all the power cables coming up for the units, right? Like there's nowhere where any of these power cables can come up in that sense, right? So it's like, where does that all happen? What we're gonna do is end up mounting a bracket right here and then bringing up the power cables and all of the transducer cables and all of that stuff right through here. Might have to make this a little bit bigger, but that'll clean up really nice. It's all about trying to make the boat like super clean and look professional when it's done. But like I said in the last video, I want, I want StarCraft to see this too, because I want to help try to improve their boats for the future and make it easier for the angler when it comes to rigging stuff. Just little things that can happen, right? Like we're always going to have graphs on it. Maybe you won't have 
this over kilographs on it, but you're still going to have a place for your power cable and your transducer cable and all that's going to come up. So anyways, we are going to rig a rod and a reel right now for early season with uh, what I'll be using in Carter as well here, a Savage Gear um, Battletech walleye rod. And we're going to rig it with some suffix 10 pound and get all that going. Talk a little bit about it, about how you can save your line um, and not use the whole spool in that sense because braided line is super expensive. I'll talk about what I'm using, some knots, and then some baits, and we'll do a little bit of a giveaway here for this. And then I'll probably end up being more install boat, or in, there'll be more install to this video too. It's not just gonna be this, but we're gonna jump back and forth right now. Okay, so Carter's working on the, the line here, and you can see he's got the scissors out, and he's tying something here. That's because when you use a spool of line like this, there's no reason to use the whole spool. We're using half of a reel only. This, this line right here, you'll be able to do two or three rods with it easily. Plus, if you ever wanted to, you could actually turn that line around and reuse it again. But there's no reason to tie this right to the back of your spool. But you want to have your spool full for better casting and uh, line management. So we have backing that we always keep on there. Any type of mono will work for backing. Anything you have that's older, stuff like that will work good. But fill your spool about halfway type of thing and then put it on with the rest of the line. This rod right here is a six foot three battle tech rod from Savage Gear. It is a medium light, fast action. And I have a 500 series reel on here. Right now, this is a Sahara 500, but I do have some reels coming from uh, Savage Gear here at some point to try this year. The line on this type of setup, I'm using a six pound, it won't focus, there we go, 131 G core braid by suffix the first year i started using this was last year and i was super impressed so i got a bunch more to do all my rods again this year and like i said this is this is like the lightest uh line that i'm gonna fish so carter's gonna rig that up and on that there what i'll do early season is a lot of light 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 jigs one eighth ounce this is a one eighth ounce uh kalen's google eye jig with the long shank this one's for the sh a short shank. This is a Lindy live bait, live bait jig. And then of course we got the jigs we're gonna be giving away here from Jared's jigs as well, which all of these are great options. Your, your, um, your Kalen's Google Eye ones work really good for casting out and popping them back in. Your Lindy live bait jig is a really good vertical presentation. And this is kind of a hybrid with a vertical, uh, vertical presentation as well as like casting out and hopping them back in these ones will make a little bit noise so if you're in some dirty water you can maybe just get something uh you can draw something them in you can draw fish in with that little rattle that's in that eye it's not major so it's not like going to be super loud but it is it is something those are the four jigs that i'll be crushing with this year for sure i do want to run a giveaway for this giveaway package number one so what are we going to do for this giveaway you just have to comment below in this video one of your goals for this open water season and we will pick a random winner out of uh, a generator here on youtube i can put some uh i can i can put all the comments into a section there it'll tell me how many comments i'll press the button and it'll give me a comment it'll pick it out a comment picker i guess the only other thing i should mention too is we don't run braids straight to those jigs. We're gonna be tying on a six pound suffix fluorocarbon leader here, advanced fluorocarbon. This has been really, really good. Last year again was the first year I started using it and I was super happy. I am going with a six pound light, light or during this, this time. Now, later in the year when I'm starting to pitch fish a little bit more aggressively, I'll start going up to like a, uh, an eight pound, a 10 pound braid. This is usually if I'm just fishing lightly on the boat. I'm not looking to cast this out like, you know, like 60, 70 feet and pop fish from far away. This is in close quarters. Once you get farther away, I like a little bit heavier uh, line for when your bigger hook sets, you don't break anything. But for a finesse, finesse fishing, six pound braid, six pound fluorocarbon. And then what I'll do with this rod is I'll actually take a piece of electrical tape and I'll put it around the reel and that line or that color, say if it's blue, will be dedicated that year to six pound uh, braid, not, not floral, braid. So, and then the eight pound will have yellow and then the red will have, uh, it'll be 10 pound, right? So I put a different color around the reel for what that is gonna be. So then I'm like, oh, I want my six pound rod, right? There it is, bang, grab it, easy to use. But that is going to be a, a slick setup for this year, for sure. Right now, Carter is putting on the bracket for the trolling motor right now. And I will jump into the boat and kind of explain what we've ran for 
wires and everything. But this is a little bit tedious for this bracket, dealing with all of these little nuts and bolts type of thing here, right tight to the uh, trolling motor itself. But he's nailing it down. We'll jump in the boat. We'll talk about the wires that we ran real quick. We fought with some wires and uh, then we're gonna install the trolling motor itself. The second wire, which there's gonna be a couple here, I need to bring power to the front for the depth finders. I am running a third battery below here, which I'll open right away and show you it. But again, we had a tough time getting that rope or a cable down to where we needed to go, but we actually found a situation. I'm putting a rope in there right now so I can feed all of my power cables through there. And I'll show you how you do that with the rope in terms of extending it and leaving it a little bit longer. But that rope will be like double the length of what I need and it'll always stay in there. But in here, you can see that that rope goes to there. So I got it to where it needs to be, that those wires are gonna eventually feed through there, gonna come through the hole, everything's gonna be good. But we could not get it to come down through there. But what we found is that the rod tube at the back was actually opened up and we could slide that cable, or we, we use a different cable besides that rope to start with, but we could slide the cable through the rod tube and then we could pull that rod tube out and that cable just dropped right to the floor. So now that that rope's in there, we're laughing. We'll have no issues of ever getting a cable from the front to the to the battery so two of these are going to be for a trolling motor and one is going to be for electronics plus a charging station and the last thing we did here is we put up the networking box this is in the electronic battery area there that's going to have all the cables battery etc carter's done with the bracket there so we will now uh, commence installing trolling motor trolling motor on the boat okay well the trolley motor is mounted i didn't show a lot of the whole install process just because i well had to use my hands at the same time carter was using his hand so nobody could really hold the camera but the biggest thing to remember with the trolling motor is to when you put it on there is to put it and de deploy it and make sure that you get a little bit of clearance from your gunnel here we got like about an inch hat type of thing right here so we could have maybe gone a little bit further over but that's kind of what we we chose right now. I like this bracket. This uh, I believe it is uh, MKA 21. I do have a thing for it is here. A quick release bracket. Yeah, this one right here. This MKA 21. If you go bigger, I know they uh, recommend like a, a metal plate or whatever if you have the Altera. But I've always used this bracket. It's usually pretty easy to take in and out. Sometimes a little bit. Uh, to start with, it takes a little bit more work uh, wiggling in and out, but eventually everything kind of levels out and uh, it's good. I do put a thin layer of plastic underneath. I'm gonna see if I can find. This is the plastic that I'll put underneath that little small square puck here that's in the center of this bracket sometimes there, just because when you have carpet up here, sometimes that puck will sink down into the carpet and then it's harder to line everything up. But the 80 pound Tarova, 60 inch shaft, iPilot, that's what I went with. I will talk more about all that stuff when I do like a whole boat overview of why I did everything and whatnot. But trolling motor is on. The a lot of most boats you can kind of tuck it up a little bit further here. I was a little bit worried with having the horn and the light here that I wasn't going to get it to where I wanted, but the head of the shaft ended up sticking right perfectly over top of the boat. You don't want it overhanging too much of the boat or else you you risk hitting hitting things with it in that sense. So it's nice to kind of have it in line. So I'm happy with how that all came together. And uh, yeah, now we are going to start mounting where the front units are gonna go. I'm only gonna have one dedicated unit up here, but I am gonna have another ram mount that's up here and available to move the apex for the uh, mega live imaging here if I wanna fish off the front of the boat. So that's gonna be our step now is to kind of do a little bit of a stack unit right here so it's been a couple of minutes since i've done any filming here at all and as i'm setting up so lots has changed which i'm going to walk through here but i'm currently going to be installing the splash guards now that i've gotten from white cap splash guards i used them last year i should say last year the last three years on my last boat and they were amazing i'm going to talk about the install a little bit i have a super simple install with the Starcraft, I'm impressed with that the way these rivets work out right here for the board that sits right here. I just have to literally put it right on there and drill it. There's no like having to uh, make sure it's level and all that fun stuff. So that is pretty exciting 
in that sense. You don't want to put them too low because you want your splash guards. Everybody thinks you should, or not everybody, but a lot of people think you want to put a splash guard and have it like li your top lined up here. The splash guard is all about getting as high as you can on your boat in the sense where it's when you're backing in the waves or holding still in that sense, anything like anything that all in general, you want it higher so the waves don't come over the top. So we're going to get it nice and high for this and I'll kind of explain that all. I can't really show any of the drilling process, but as I put it on there and mount it, I will uh, kind of show you what I'm talking about a little higher is better. So you can see here when it's done, how how high it is, right? In that sense, like it it's above there. A lot, like I said, some people want to match this up here with their, their gunnel. And there's no point of having your splash guard way down here. You make, make as much use as you can. It doesn't look level because my garage is sloped for the drain, but everything is very level and looks, looks good. I like it, I like it a lot. So the next biggest thing to watch is when you put these brackets in here, the way you put it in, you want to kind of give yourself a little bit of a space right there, like right in here. Don't put your bracket so that sits up tight. Give yourself just a little bit of space right, right there, basically. Not much, just a little. So splash guards are installed and they look sharp. Not going to lie. Started to mount here a transducer. Clayton, it's not level. Well... It is level. Don't level it off with anything in your boat because it might not be on the trailer. You want it leveled off from the floor. So say from here, I, I wasn't zoomed in the camera. Say from like right here in this area, those should be exactly the same from the floor, right? Step back, make sure it's level with the floor that way. Your down imaging side isn't as important for getting it exactly in line with the hull. I'll explain the 2D side more right away. This side, I don't care if this thing's perfect in terms of like level with the hull. It's got to be level. I shouldn't say it like that. How can I explain this better? Your down imaging, uh, side imaging transducer is only important in troll speeds. So your boat's going to be in the water. I don't want this thing, you know, submerged in the water that much when I'm driving because I'm getting my readout, my 2D, my speed and all that on that side. So this side isn't as important in terms of getting it down low. I don't like to run this one that low. I like to keep it up basically just to the point where if I ever did beach my boat right here, my transducer wouldn't hit. You can run it higher too, like say on this corner right here for like sharpshooting and whatnot and not worrying about it ever being in the water when you're on plane. But I'll explain more of why I'm kind of doing this here in a little bit. Okay, both deucers set up. This one will be close. Once I get it to more level, I might have to make a slight adjustment there and bring up the left side a little bit. It's the best thing about transducer boards like this you can make adjustments with ease. So I definitely recommend putting on transducer boards because if you have to make adjustments to your transducers, there's no extra holes in your boat. You screw that transducer up the first time you put it on your boat, well, guess what? Now you got extra holes in your boat. So that's why you put on transducer boards. The down imaging side imaging one I've got nailed, I think. This one might have to make a slight adjustment, minor. Minor, minor, minor. I'm going to toss on my talon bracket now. And actually the talon itself, because I have a flip over there. So I just got to take over that splash guard when I want to take the talon or when I want to take the boat out of the garage. So yeah. And why do I put transducer on each side? I'm covering more square footage. So when I run down imaging in 2D at the same time, I'm covering this side of the boat. I'm covering that side of the boat. I've had days where I can mark fish on here and not over here, or I mark fish here and not over here. So that's why I set up the two different ones like that. You definitely want to put your high speed one on the starboard side though, the way that the prop turns. So you can read on plane and even auto chart on plane. I do a lot of areas too. So die old. Well, I don't know if I've ever had a boat so 
dialed before. Besides vacuuming, vacuuming, vacuum, besides using the vacuum, snipping a few wire ties, I am literally set and dialed. Right now, like I talked about earlier, maybe in the last video, actually, I've got the mega lie that's gonna be running here. I've got some extra power cables, and actually, it's probably long enough to get pretty close to the front. It's actually way longer than I thought, so I might not need more power cables for sure if I wanna run that at the front of the boat. I might test that at some point. Trolling motor, splash guards, talon. These things are amazing here. I use these in the boat all the time here for filming. Easy cam posts. I put one here on this pedestal and I'll end up having one up there too when I'm fishing at the back of the boat. And then when I'm in the front of the boat, I'll run two easy cam posts right on that one pedestal. I'm pretty proud of this one right now. Like I talked about, I got three Dakota lithium batteries in there. I have what's set, I have an inverter set up here. I won't gotta hold it longer, which will power on there and right here. I've got cords that come up through a cup holder, which I can run GoPros and all that stuff from. So that is going to make my filming a little bit more dialed in that sense. But this is sweet here. If you want to need to be able to charging batteries or anything like that it is going to help me for longer trips. Say if I want to go camp on some islands, stuff like that, I'm going to be more dialed in that situation. Spare easy cam post right here. That's going to be going there. Um, the rod holders, I've got four in here right now, which is overkill. I'm not going to need that much. I do have right now, my mega live is on my fishing specialties pole. Um, I have a setup coming from arc lab to be able to try that out and kind of see which one I like better. But so far this looks good. And then once the arc lab one gets here, I will make that switch too and try them both out and see what I, uh, like better, but this is going to be my 360 mount though as well. So I, I don't know if I'm ever been this dialed in here. Here I drilled a hole here and then used some kind of, I don't know what really that's for, for sure what mount this is, but Steve from Regina Marine said, or suggested that. And that works amazing for all my cables running below there. This is the power cable for the 360. Other than that, I can pull some of them out in. I've got my drawer already ready to go with some tools and all that fun stuff. I've noticed so far that the storage in this boat is mind blowing. Like mind, mind blowing. I've got so many compartments yet that don't have anything in them. Like one, two, three, four compartments with nothing. I'm five compartments. There's one, I like this one too right here. Quick access to get to whatever I need for tackle, etc. And yeah, so I'll be able to pack this for multi species and be like so set up. Part of like me having a boat, I have to have it organized for the whole filming side of it, right? It's more than just a fishing boat for me. I gotta have it so dialed for filming as well. So I've never had a boat this set up. Anyways, let's give some jigs away, like I said I was going to. Okay, giveaway one from Jared's Jigs, as you've seen in a previous video. Uh, there's probably like $100 worth of jigs there, pretty close to that. Purple, black, green, orange. I like that one right there, half purple, half uh, chartreuse. Money. So all you have to do to win these jigs is just comment below in this video of one of your goals for this year. It can be one word, it can be walleye, it can be pike, it can be big pike, big walleye, whatever. Give me a goal below and we are going to do a random, uh, a random selection from the YouTube comment picker. And oh, Cindy just texted me. That's good. She's probably wondering why I'm spending so much time in my boat and it's not even fishing season yet. But let's do a giveaway there. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do another giveaway, number two for those jigs, probably in like my second or third video, something like that. Once I start fishing with some jigs and leeches, who knows when it's gonna be, but I will have another giveaway coming from that. So enter below. That'll kind of wrap up this video, whatever. Once I edit this, um, I'll look to see what I missed in terms of the boat install and I'll kind of talk about it as we go. But it is dialed ready. Yeah, opening day is just a few days away in Southern Saskatchewan and I'm gonna see if we can crush some 
walleyes. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.